Where did you go? It was National No SpongeBob Day. National No SpongeBob Day? Yeah. A whole day dedicated to getting away from you. A day? But you guys have been away for weeks. This episode of SpongeBob is considered one of the most heart-wrenching and cruel moments in this cartoon's history. It's none other than the infamous National No SpongeBob Day episode. If you've ever thought about SpongeBob being one of the most loyal and lovable characters ever, this episode is a slap in the face to all of that goodness. Let's dive into this emotional roller coaster of an episode that left a lot of us screaming SpongeBob deserves better. Quick recap. In this episode, the people of Bikini Bottom collectively decides to create a holiday called National National No SpongeBob Day. Yes, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's an actual holiday where the entire town celebrates the fact that SpongeBob isn't around. Imagine waking up and finding out everyone you know have invented a day to enjoy life without you. Savage. SpongeBob, of course, has no clue about this until he sees everyone ditching town. He tries to figure out what's going on, but gets absolutely nowhere. Patrick, his supposed best friend, tells him that he's going away to have fun without him. Gary, SpongeBob's pet snail, also packs up to join the festivities. Like, damn, even Gary participated in the foolery. This episode is basically SpongeBob living out everyone's worst nightmare, being excluded on purpose by the people he cares about the most. He tries to tag along, and in typical SpongeBob fashion, does everything he can to make things better. He's excited and desperate to be involved, but everyone, Patrick, Gary, Squidward, and the entire town, shuts him out. Eventually, SpongeBob realizes that the town is literally throwing a party to celebrate his absence. Ouch. And the worst part? This all goes down right outside of Bikini Bottom in a place SpongeBob can't reach. He was being left out of a party while also hearing the fun from across the street. Harsh. Talk about FOMO. Spoiler alert, no one was happy with this episode. Many SpongeBob fans consider it one of the cruelest episodes ever written. One Reddit user wrote, This episode is basically a SpongeBob hate parade, and I'm not here for it. SpongeBob is the glue that holds Bikini Bottom together, and this is how they repay him? I mean, can you blame them, Spongebob is constantly helping out the citizens of Bikini Bottom. He's always there for Squidward, who, let's be real, doesn't deserve Spongebob's kindness half the time. He's got the unwavering friendship of Patrick, or so we thought, and he works his flipping fingers to the bone for Mr. Krabs. But when Spongebob needs some love in return, the whole town ghosts him. It's the ultimate betrayal. Another Reddit user pointed out, Patrick joining in on the day was the last straw for me. He's supposed to be Spongebob's BFF, but instead he jumps at the chance to ditch him. Like, I can't even. Patrick has always been a bit clueless, but this is a whole new level of backstabbing. SpongeBob's loyalty to Patrick is unshakable, but this episode exposes that Patrick's loyalty is kind of non-existent when it comes down to it. And the fact that Gary, the snail who SpongeBob literally loves and cares for like a son, joins in, gut-wrenching. If I were SpongeBob, I'd start questioning every relationship I have. The dude is as loyal as they come. He goes above and beyond for his friends, co-workers, and even his enemies. SpongeBob constantly tries to make life better for everyone around him. He's an optimist, always smiling through the chaos, and is pretty much the heart of Bikini Bottom. He tolerates Squidward's never-ending sass, his horrible boss Mr. Krabs, and takes care of Gary like the responsible pet owner he is. But in this episode, everyone turns their back on him. It's like the ultimate betrayal, especially for a guy who would literally give you his last jellyfish jelly sandwich if you asked. The entire national no SpongeBob day is just a reminder that no matter how much SpongeBob gives, it's not always reciprocated. He's too pure for this world, and apparently too pure for Bikini Bottom. This episode is one of the darker moments in Spongebob history. Sure, Spongebob has had some savage moments before, but this one hit different because it was personal. Unlike the usual chaos that goes down in Bikini Bottom, which is often hilarious, this episode is built on exclusion and isolation, and that's tough to watch, especially for a character who has done nothing but bring joy to his community. Imagine living in a town where everyone seems to like you well enough, until they all decide they need a break from you. SpongeBob didn't ask for this. He's never once tried to hurt anyone. In fact, the most annoying thing he does is be overly friendly, and even that's subjective. What makes this episode even more brutal is how it highlights SpongeBob's innocence. He's completely blindsided by the holiday and can't understand why anyone would need a break from him. He's genuinely hurt by it, but still, he tries to be part of the fun. That level of kindness in the face of rejection. That's SpongeBob's heart of gold shining through.
But man, it's painful to watch. I get that Spongebob can be a little much sometimes, but this episode felt like a direct attack on his character. It's like the writers wanted to see how far they could push him. And honestly, that might be exactly what the writers were going for. A test of Spongebob's unwavering positivity. But it definitely left some fans feeling like it was too much. What really stings about this episode is that it wasn't just some random town-wide event. It was a betrayal by the people Spongebob considers family and friends. Patrick, the guy who has spent literally every day with Spongebob, bails without a second thought. And also, you mean to tell me they needed a break from Spongebob and not Patrick? It probably wouldn't even have hurt as bad if it was a no Spongebob and Patrick Day. And Gary, at two brute, this betrayal hits harder because we've seen Spongebob bend over backward for Patrick and Gary. Remember the episode where Spongebob literally searches all over town for Gary when he runs away? Or the countless times Spongebob has saved Patrick from himself? Spongebob has always had their backs, and yet when it's time for the no Spongebob Day celebration, they're the first to leave him in the dust. Gary's betrayal felt personal. Patrick can be a jerk sometimes, but Gary, the snail Spongebob Ray, Fans were not happy. Twitter, Reddit, TikTok, you name it. People across the internet were fired up about how dirty Bikini Bottom did Spongebob in this episode. TikTok creators posted memes about National No Spongebob Day, with some even joking that the entire town deserves to be cursed with Spongebob's laugh on repeat for how they treated him. One popular tweet said, If there were a National No Me Day, I'd move to a different town and never look back. Spongebob is too forgiving. And that's the thing. Spongebob being being the sunshine of a character that he is doesn't even hold a grudge by the end of the episode. If anything, he blames himself for being too much for everyone. Like, Spongebob, no. This isn't about you, it's about the town taking you for granted, my guy. The internet also banded together in Spongebob's defense, with many fans calling for justice. Spongebob was too good for them, tweeted at Bikini Bottom Tears. If they had a national no Squidward day, the whole town would be better off. But Spongebob? Come on, too far. National No Spongebob Day is one of those episodes that sticks with you for all the wrong reasons. It's a slap in the face to a character who doesn't deserve it. Spongebob is the ultimate friend, the guy who would literally drop everything to help anyone in Bikini Bottom, no matter how small or silly their problem is. So to have an entire day dedicated to not having him around, that's just cold. One of the reasons this episode feels so brutal is that it highlights something we all deal with at some point. Rejection from the people we care about. Spongebob doesn't have many boundaries. He's always giving and giving without asking for much in return. But when his whole town, and even his best friends, turn on him, it's a wake-up call. The people he loves don't necessarily love him back in the same way. If this isn't the epitome of nice guys finish last, I don't know what is. It's not like Spongebob has ever asked for recognition. He's the type of friend who doesn't keep score. Squidward might be the most obvious. He's been trashing Spongebob for years, but let's not forget how many time Spongebob has saved his tentacled behind. From rescuing him from jellyfish to helping him achieve his clarinet dreams, Spongebob is always there. And how does Squidward repay him? By happily embracing no Spongebob day with a big grin. And don't even get me started on Mr. Krabs. Spongebob is the only reason the Krusty Krab is still in business. The man literally works for pennies. Actually, less than that, shows up early, stays late, and cooks the best Krabby Patties in the entire ocean. And yet, Mr. Krabs is cool with the holiday too? It's baffling. It's like, without Spongebob, Mr. Krabs would be bankrupt faster than you can say, me money. Patrick is a whole other issue. Patrick is supposed to be Spongebob's best friend. They've had countless adventures, shared secrets, and always looked out for each other. But Patrick just dips at the first sign of freedom. It's honestly heartbreaking to see how quickly Patrick jumps on board with leaving Spongebob out. Redditor you Patrick who put it best. Patrick is Spongebob's ride or die, until he's not. I guess friendship doesn't mean much when there's a day dedicated to ditching you. Even Sandy, who is usually a solid friend to Spongebob, isn't around. In fact, the entire town is off living their best lives, celebrating the absence of the one person who holds them all together. And what's worse is that Spongebob is left thinking it's his fault for being too much. It's a classic example of a giver being taken advantage of by people who only care about themselves. The question that keeps popping up is, 
Why? Why did SpongeBob deserve this? The answer is simple. He didn't. SpongeBob is the living embodiment of positivity, loyalty, and kindness. He's the one person who would never turn his back on his friends, no matter how much they annoy or frustrate him. He's the guy who would literally throw a party just to make someone else smile. But when it comes time for the town to do something nice for him, they throw a party to get away from him instead. It's tragic in a way that cuts deep for fans. Redditor you Sponge Love or Forever pointed out, SpongeBob does doesn't get mad, doesn't seek revenge, and doesn't even tell anyone off. He just accepts that maybe he's too much for everyone. But here's the thing, it's them who are the problem. They don't deserve SpongeBob. And that's a major takeaway from this episode. The fact that SpongeBob doesn't lash out or demand an apology just proves how kind-hearted he is. He's too good for Bikini Bottom, and honestly, too good for all of us. At its core, National No SpongeBob Day hits on a deep truth. Sometimes, no matter how good you are, the world doesn't appreciate you. SpongeBob is a beacon of positivity, but even the people closest to him don't always get it. Instead of loving him for who he is, they just want to escape his energy for a while. And that's something that a lot of us can relate to. How many times have you felt like you were too much for the people around you? How many times have you been loyal to friends who didn't return that same energy? This episode is a reminder that even the most kind-hearted among us can feel isolated and rejected. Even though the episode is painful, the internet was quick to do what it does best, meme it. Fans were both furious and funny in their responses. Twitter users posted memes of SpongeBob looking for Lorne, with captions like, when you realize your friends threw a party and didn't invite you. There was also a meme of SpongeBob packing up his jellyfish net like Gary did, with the caption, when your best friend dips, but you've still got love for them. TikTok blew up with edits of SpongeBob's sad moments in the episode paired with heartbreaking songs, making the whole thing feel even more dramatic. One viral tweet read, If I lived in Bikini Bottom, I'd spend every day making sure SpongeBob knew he was appreciated. Hash justice for Sponge. Another tweet went viral for saying SpongeBob should move to a new town where people appreciate his optimism. Maybe Rock Bottom would be a better fit. At the end of the day, National No SpongeBob Day is one of the toughest episodes for me to watch. Not because it's badly written, but because it feels like a massive betrayal of a character who has done nothing but love his community. SpongeBob's endless optimism and loyalty are what make him great, and seeing the people he cares about throw it back in his face. That's just too much. SpongeBob didn't deserve this treatment, and if Bikini Bottom had any sense, they'd be throwing a national Let's Appreciate SpongeBob Day instead. But until that happens, we'll be over here, standing up for our favorite yellow sponge, because even if his town doesn't get it, we know that SpongeBob Bob is the hero Bikini Bottom doesn't deserve, but the one they need. So here's to SpongeBob, the king of loyalty, the master of good vibes, and the guy who deserves a lot better than a holiday that celebrates his absence. Let's just hope Bikini Bottom figures that out before it's too late, but I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. How did you feel about the episode when you first saw it? Did it affect you as much as it did other people who watched it? Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that post notification bell. Until next time.